Hello everyone and welcome. We're here in Yeshivat Chut Shel Chesed under the guidance of Rabbi Shalom Arash. Thank you for joining us today in our journey through Rabbi Nachman's stories. We're already holding by the last story. The story is called The Seven Beggars, where a boy and a girl were lost in a forest. They ended up marrying each other. And on each day of their wedding celebration, a different beggar who gave them food when they were lost and they were hungry came to visit them and to bless them on their wedding day and give them presents. So today we're holding by the third day. On the third day, the couple once again began to reminisce, began to remember. And they wept and they yearned and they said, hey, how can we bring the third beggar who had a speech defect? All of a sudden he appeared and said, Hineni, here I am. He fell on them and kissed them. He then said, at first I blessed you that you should be like me. Now I am giving you as a wedding present, a gift that you should be like me. Oh, so now you're thinking, we don't want a gift like that to have a speech defect. He says, oh, I do not have a speech defect at all. Rather, all the words in the world which do not praise Hashem do not have any perfection in them. I therefore seem to have a speech defect since I cannot speak words which lack perfection. But actually, I do have a speech. I do not have a speech defect at all. Quite the contrary, I'm a wonderful orator and speaker. I can speak in parables and rhymes that are so wonderful that there is no created thing in the world that does not want to hear me. To create a thing means also the, the angels, so to speak. Well, we see from here already a major lesson that speech in its perfection is just to praise Hashem. We say, thank you, Hashem. The more we thank Hashem, the more we purify our speech and our speech is perfect. So this, this great beggar, this Sadiq, he didn't want to speak anything else besides praising Hashem. If he wasn't able to praise Hashem through his speech, he would not talk. So people thought, hey, must be he doesn't talk. The parables and lyrics that I know contain all wisdom. Regarding this, I have the word of a great man who is called the true man of kindness. And there's an entire story about this. So, as the other beggars before, they brought proof. This one also brings a proof, and with proof comes a story. Once, all the wise men were sitting together, and each one boasted of his wisdom. One boasted that his wisdom, he had discovered how to make iron. One said he knew how to make a different type of metal. One said he knew how to make silver. One says he knew how to make gold. One said he knows how to make weapons. One boasted that he had invented ways of making metals from ingredients out of which metals are not usually made. That in a way is like, so to speak, like counterfeit. One boasted about other science, which with, since with these sciences, such things as gunpowder were invented. Thus, each one boasted about his wisdom. Finally, one of them spoke up and said, I am wiser than all of you. I am li wise like the day. Interesting thing to say. He said, if all your wisdom put together, it would only amount to a single hour. That's what he meant to say. It is true that each science is diverted from a particular day, depending on what was created on that day. Nevertheless, all the sciences merely involve combining things in different ways, right? Where, when, when do you get science experiments? You take different things and you put it together and you make something new, right? With true wisdom, one can gather all these sciences into a single hour, but I am wise like a full day. This was the boast of the last wise men. I spoke up. This is the, uh, the beggar that cannot speak, right? He said he spoke up. It's funny that he spoke up. And he said, like which day? Speaking of me, the wise men replied, this man is even wiser than I am since he can ask like which day. However, I am wise like any day you prefer. But it showed that he knew what he was talking about. He understood the lingo, so to speak. Now, you might ask why a person who can ask, like, which day is wiser than one who is as wise as any day as he desires? This, however, involved the story. It concerned the true man of kindness, who is actually a very great man. I go around and gather all true kindnesses and bring it to the true man of kindness. Time itself is something that was created, and time exists primarily as a result of true kindness. Because if a person is not doing what they're supposed to be doing here in this world, so there might not be any reason for him to exist. So maybe there should just, we should close shop. 
But no, Hashem has kindness. Hashem has true kindness. Now there's a man that looks for this kindness and he finds those kindnesses and he gathers it all together. I therefore go around gathering all true kindness and bring it to the true man of kindness. So there's a man that gathers and there's the true man of kindness, okay? There's a mountain. On the mountain there's a stone. From this stone flows a spring. This almost sounds like the, the Holy of Holies. It's the Evan Shatia, and from there goes to the whole world. Everything has a heart. Therefore, the world as a whole also has a heart. The heart of the world has a complete body. So, the heart itself, this is a very Kabbalistic sort of ideas, right? So we know that there's, there's, there's the ten spheres, but each sphere has, has the ten in it. So, so too, just like we, we could use it as, even in Kabbalah, they use arms and legs. It doesn't mean arms and legs and, and, and body and a head, right? All these things are just... Uh, like a metaphor, so to speak, right? So now, if the world has a heart, even the heart itself has head, arm, feet, different organs and hearts too. The heart of the world has a complete body, which face, hands and feet. However, a toenail of the heart of the world has more of the essential nature of a heart than the heart of anything else. So even the smallest toenail, which seemingly doesn't have any life, right? In our way of looking at things of the heart is more hardier than anything else in the whole world. The mountain with the stone and the spring stands at one end of the world. The heart of the world stands at the opposite end of the world. The heart of the world faces the spring and constantly longs and yearns to come to the spring. It has a very, very great longing and it cries out very much that it should be able to come to the spring. The spring also yearns for the heart. The heart has two things that make it weak. First, the sun pursues it and burns it. This is because it has such a desire, yearning to go and be close to the spring. The second thing that weakens the heart is the great longing and yearning that it constantly has towards the spring. It longs and yearns so much that the soul goes out and cries out, constantly stands facing the spring and cries out, help, desiring it so very much. When the heart wants to rest a bit and catch its breath, a great bird comes and spreads its wing over it, protecting it from the sun. It could then relax a bit. However, even when it is resting, it looks toward the spring and yearns for it. So, something that we could get out of this is that we have a goal, right? And there's a place that we need to get to. How do we get there? We get there by yearning. A person wants to attain holiness. A person wants to get closer to Hashem. Even something mundane. You have to have your goal before you at all times and realize, am I acting in the direction of my goal or am not? Now, this... this Heart was full of yearning. It's a heart at the end of the day, right? Heart it comes is emotions. And the emotions is just going to be full of desire. Nothing in the way. Pure heart. Just desiring and desiring to get to its goal. To get to the spring. A spring is something of, of, of a place that can renew. The spring is a place that's refreshing. Spring is something that it wants to get to. And all it does is yearning and yearning and yearning. Plus you have the sun, which is the outside sources drying it out. So even when you're resting, even when you feel like you need to take a break, and it's important to break in your service of Hashem, it's important to, to have downtime throughout your day. You're doing a lot of things, right? But even when you're breaking, how are you breaking? Are you breaking with yearning to still get to your goal? Or are you breaking and say, ah, oh, I had enough of this, right? The Irish talks about it a lot, even just to go to sleep, right? It's a very high level, but to bring in an example. A bar says a person should go to sleep through yearning and desiring to cling to Hashem. How many people could attest that they do that? I'm not sure. But is that something that we should aspire to reach? For sure. Right? Now, a person could go to sleep and say, I had enough of this, my day. I'd rather be sleeping. I don't, I'll deal with my problems tomorrow. I'd rather have some sleep now. And I don't want to think about anything. That's one way of going to sleep. Another way of going to sleep is I'm going to sleep to have strength to serve Hashem. I'm getting, going to sleep so I could be strong tomorrow. Hashem made the world that we have to sleep. We can't just continue going and going and going, right? So it depends. How do you sleep? So this, this heart, even while it's resting, where the bird miraculously comes and protects it, it's still going in that direction, still looking at its goal, still looking at the spring. One may wonder, since it yearns for it so much, why does it not go to the spring? <laughs> okay, so you want to get to the spring. So just do it already. What, what are you waiting for? 
However, if it were to come close to the mountain, then it would no longer see the peak. It then cannot gaze at the spring, and if it stopped looking at the spring, it would die, since its main source of life is the spring. When it stands facing the mountain, it can see the peak upon which the spring is, but as soon as it comes close to the mountain, the peak is hidden from its eyes. If it could not see the spring, then it would die. If the heart died, then the entire world would cease to exist. The heart of the life force of all things, and nothing can exist without a heart. It is for this reason that it cannot go to the spring. It therefore stands facing it, yearning and crying out. So, on the other hand, we could say, hey, you're never going to make it to the spring. You're not going to go to the spring. It's not possible for you to get to the spring. So give it up. Go do something else with your life. No. Still desires to get to the spring. Time does not exist for the spring. The spring is not inside of time at all. The spring only has time because the heart gives it a gift for in one day. However, when the time comes for the day to come to a close, then at the end of the day, the spring will not have any more time and it will therefore die. And this would cause the heart to die. The entire world would then cease to exist. Therefore, the end of the, towards the end of the day, they began to take leave of each other. At that time, they began to speak to one another in wonderful parables and lyrics with great love and tremendous desire. The true man of kindness watches very careful, carefully over this. At the exact end of the day, the true man of kindness gives the heart a gift of one day. The heart gives the day to the spring, and the spring then comes once again has time. When this day comes from the place from which it comes, it also comes with very wonderful parables and lyrics containing all times of wisdom. There are a difference between the various days. There is Sunday, Monday. There are new moon days. There are festivals, Shabbat, right? All the time that the true man of kindness has comes from my hand. It is I who go forth and gather all the true kindness from which comes into existence. So our, our beggar, the one that stutters, the one that has a speech problem, he is the one that gathers all the kindnesses. He brings it to the true man of kindness. The true man of kindness gives the heart and the spring more time, more life. It is for this reason that he is wiser, even than the wise man who is as wise as any day that one prefers. This is because time and days come into existence primarily through the beggar, with a speech defect, who gathers true kindness, which in basis of time, and brings the kindness to the true man of kindness. The latter gives the day to the heart, who in turn gives it to the spring, and as a result, the entire world is sustained. Therefore, time is brought into existence with parables and lyrics that contain all wisdom through the beggar with the speech defect. So, if you go all the way back, yes, there's, there's beautiful speeches and there's love between the spring and the heart, but it's only because of our... Our beggar, the one that gathers the, the kindnesses. Therefore, I have the word of the true man of kindness that I can recite parables and lyrics that contain all wisdom. All time, along with parables and lyrics, come into existence through my hand. And now I am giving you this as a wedding present. You should be just like me. After he gave them his blessings, there was a great joy and rejoicing. This is the end of the third day of the wedding celebrations. And we see just how important it is, number one, to have purified speech. That's a very basic lesson we could get out of this. What does that mean? It means to thank Hashem. The more we thank Hashem, the more purified our speech is. Our speech is, 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 a, is a speech of the world to come, so, so to speak. We know that all sacrifices will be null and void besides for the thanksgiving. The more we thank Hashem, the more we're connecting to the world to come. The more we're connecting to the real point of, of speech. Hashem gave us speech so we could talk to Him, so we could thank Him. Another thing is how important it is to look for the kindnesses. And you see that the whole world is relying on kindness. This beggar goes and he finds and he looks at the kindnesses that people do. And they say, wow, what a great thing you did. A person should stop before the end of the day and say, what kindness did I do to other people? What kindness do people do to me? Realize and recognize the kindness in the world. When you realize the kindness in the world, there's a purpose to live. There's a purpose to wake up the next day. There's a purpose to have more time in this world. Yes, there are going to be mistakes. Yes, people are going to do bad things. But the more we focus on the good, the more we focus on the positivity, the more life we breathe into the world. May Hashem help us to connect and to know. And don't forget that other lesson is that when we go and we, we have a goal, 
set our sights on that goal and don't give it up, even if we feel like we're never going to get to the spring. My heart's never going to get to where it's supposed to be, but continue looking in that direction and realizing where you want to go, even when you're resting, you're going in that direction. May Hashem help us to get from these stories. There's just little little messages that I thought we could get from the story, but I'm sure Rabbi Nachman has many, many deep messages. May Hashem help us to understand the messages. And even if we don't, just by listening to these stories, they do massive things for our soul. Amen. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.